that you're working on a YouTube video. Well, I was gonna, and then I started, and I really don't know what to make today, so I'm like just stumped and at a loss of what to create, so. You could always use this Photoshop Friday tutorial I just recorded. Nice shirt. Hey guys, I am going to show you today how to um, change the background of this. Either you've got like a sheet up and it's a little wrinkly or like we do um, the blinds in our kitchen right behind us and it's gonna look like it's a professional shot. And then I'm gonna show you how to airbrush your photos so they look like a magazine. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna hit Control J twice to make two copies of my photo. So first, I'm going to click the middle one. You can label them. I don't label them, but you can label them if you want. So I'm gonna click the middle one and I'm gonna take my lasso tool up here. I like the magnetic one because I don't have to be too precise on this. So I'm just gonna go around what I want to kind of like get rid of in the background. So I just have the background to deal with right now. It doesn't really matter, just like make sure you get all of the person in it just so there's no like weird like arm still there you don't have to get it precise whatsoever um, and I want to keep my table in there just so it doesn't look like I'm floating okay so we got our marching ants what I'm gonna do I'm gonna hide this layer just so we can see we're gonna go up to edit fill content aware make sure that your color adaptation is clicked and then hit ok okay so, now that you see that it is all gone, it's not pretty by any means, but it doesn't really matter because I'm going to still be there when we fix the background. So I just needed to be gone just to get the background all done. So I hit Control D to get rid of the marching ants. Um, now I'm going to go up to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, Gaussian, I don't know, and I'm going to put it up really high. So you're gonna want it to where you can't really tell where, like, where your wrinkles or your background is. You can kind of tell in here just because of the color difference of our cream wall versus our white blinds. Um, but no one's really gonna be looking at that, and if they are, that's kind of weird. But whatever. Um, but you want to go as much as you can before you can tell like it's a wrinkle. Like, see here, you can still tell it is a uh, there's a white square on there. So I'm gonna go back up around 240, 332, I don't know, just play with it. See how you like it, um, I'm gonna hit okay. Now I'm gonna turn back my top layer and I am going to convert it to a smart object. So I'm gonna right click it and make sure it's highlighted. Convert to smart object, okay. This is how you can tell if it's a smart object if it has this in the corner. So these two aren't, but this one is. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go up to filter, other, Oop, hello there. <laughs> and high pass. Okay, so you can see my outline and the outline of the um, blinds behind me. So I'm gonna pull it all the way down to point one. So from there, I'm gonna kind of just keep pulling it up and just watching your screen and get as far up as you can before you start to see the stuff behind you. So you can see right here, you can see that you can tell that there's blinds behind me. So I'm gonna turn it down a little bit. So you can't really see it anymore, but it still gives us texture to follow. And it's not just gonna be like a weird blurry background. So I'm gonna hit okay. And I'm going to change the blend mode to overlay. Now I want this to be attached to this. So whatever happens with this, they're the same. So I'm gonna hit alt or option and go right in between the two on the line and just click. So now these two are attached. Now I'm gonna click this layer, your background layer, and I am gonna mask it. So I'm gonna click here. Now that it's masked, it's a white mask, so we're gonna paint off of that mask. What you need to remember is if it's a white mask, black will erase and white will put it back. So I am going to get a bigger paintbrush I'm gonna bring my hardness up a little more than 
a little less than 100, and then I'm going to kind of start to paint. Sometimes if you have your uh, high pass on this layer, you can actually see your outline, which is actually really helpful when painting it back. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this, follow the outline, we can speed through this. So now I'm going to hit Alt or Option and click my mask so I can see like my whole coloring. Um, it, I personally think it's a lot easier to do it this way um, than trying to figure out where I'm at and everything. So I'm going to turn the hardness all the way up, get my paintbrush, oops, get my paintbrush bigger, put back on black, and color in my whole silhouette, avoiding obviously my triangles I just drew and um, going outside of the outline of my body that I just did. So I'm just going to go through here, coloring it in. This way I'm sure that there are no like gray spots or um, spots that I missed uh, when doing that. So to get back, I'm just going to hit Alt or Option and click my mask again. Okay. Oop, missed a little bit here. Okay. So as you can see, you can see parts of the blinds behind me. I'm going to take my paintbrush again, make it smaller, make it a little bigger than that, make it smaller, turn the hardness. Uh, we'll try it. Let's keep it there. Oops. And then I'm going to flip the colors back to white to put it back on. And I'm just going to go and fill it back in. So I, oops, that's why I like, <laughs> I like to use the hardness um, down a little like less because if I like go down into here, it's not as dramatic as if like the hardness was all the way up and it just like makes this weird divot like windows paint. Okay, so that is fixed. You can see the color difference right here. So I'm just gonna go across the window, or sorry, the table. I got the table a little bit, so I'm just gonna quick flip, put it back, flip. Oh. All right, now let's go up to my head where it just, it doesn't look like, you wouldn't be able to say, hey, those look like window blinds behind you. It looks like my hair is crimped just right there. So now you can even have like these flyaways too, like on my head where it doesn't, it looks a lot more natural um, than if I just cut my face and body out of something and slapped it on a white background. So that's how to change the background. It looks a lot more professional than me just kneeling at our kitchen table in front of our window. Um, so now what I'm going to show you how to do is to really smooth out my skin without making it look fake. So Sam is really proud of this because <laughs> he's like, oh, look at that detail. I'm like, oh, that's disgusting. <laughs> like, let me airbrush that. Let me fix that. So what I'm going to do now is I got my background all done. So I'm going to hit shift and select all of my layers. I'm going to right click and I'm going to merge my layers. So if there's any like major like pimple or something, take care of that before you do the airbrush, just because you can't go back after this and fix it. Like, see, there's a little bit of pimple there. So I'm just gonna take my spot healing tool, just click on some of these bigger bumps. And um, it'll just save you a lot of time um, if you have to redo anything. So I am going to hit command, or control J to get a copy. And then the top layer, I'm going to hit control I to invert it. Okay, from here, I'm going to go to filter, other, high pass. So this is gonna be a little bit different. I'm gonna go just 24. That's I guess the standard or whatever, that's what I do. And I'm gonna hit okay. And then I'm gonna go and do our overlay blend. And then you're done. I'm just kidding, that is not it. Do not think that <laughs> that's it. All right, now I'm gonna go to filter again. I'm gonna go to blur. I'm gonna go to Gaussian blur. I'm gonna pull it down to, let's try a three. So the lower the number, the more the blur, the higher the number really kind of like more sharpens with like people. Like our background, it was completely different. So like if I'm up here, it looks like I didn't have any blur. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna try three. I'd keep it between three and four to keep it more like less fake, I guess, looking. And I'm gonna hit okay. 
So now I am going to hit hold alt or option and I'm going to click our mask to give us an inverted mask. So this is a black uh, mask. And remember our uh, rule, if it's black, white will reveal and black will cover it up. So I'm going to go to my paintbrush and I'm going to put the hardness to zero so it blends a lot easier and yeah, that's a good size. Okay, so I like to zoom in extra and just start painting it off, you know, just go around it. See how it got dark right here when I went over it? I'm just going to go control Z. You don't want to do that. You don't want to ruin or make anything look different. I don't have any highlight on my face. Like I didn't put any shimmer highlight on, so I don't really have to worry about like bright spots. Um, but just make sure that you're not going over those because then it will dull it out and it will look super unnatural. So I'm just kind of going over this. Going over my cheeks. And then I go over the side of my nose contour. I'm going to go down to my chin. One thing to note though, don't, don't paint this on like the edge of like, like let's go with like my lips. Okay. So I'm not going to just pull it across because that completely ruins it and it does not look natural. So stay away from like, you like the shapes of and lines on your face. Like I'm not going to go underneath my nose because that just looks like I've got a burning nose now. So I just, control Z is what I always do when I mess up. So, so it gets a little red here. I don't really like that. So I'm going to reverse it, make this a little bit smaller and just go over that. But see now it kind of just makes it dark to me. I don't know. Let me look. I'm going to zoom out and you can see the difference that this has made. Like, whoa. Super airbrush looking, but also not like weird, creepy, no pores, anything. So you still have the detail in your face, but it is more of an airbrush look. Um, it looks like you've like enhanced my, like my eyes and my lips are like enhanced, but it's crazy because I didn't even touch those. So there is our finished product. Um, you can merge your layers however you want. You can just export it however you want. Um, and yeah, that is how you change the background and airbrush any of your headshot photos.